again. We're all Geek Culture Collide. We're on week 18. We're your hosts. I'm Shannon. I'm John Wise. And uh, new hat. Out with the Joker and with the Pikachu. Not for good. Not for good. I think I'm going back to the weekend Joker hat thing. <laughs> this is more for catching Pokemon. See? Uh, I figure if I wear this, I can catch more Pokemon at the park. So, um, John finally went and saw Ghostbusters. Uh, what did you think of it, John? For the most part, I liked it. Um, not the worst movie of the year I've seen, not the best movie of the year I've seen. Um, just kind of there. Uh, we're going to go over that because we're going to have a huge, heated debate. Um, not, I'm assuming not amongst us, anyway. I think we pretty much share the same views. Yeah. Uh, but we have a, an over-the-phone guest who's going to be joining us here really short, shortly. A uh, very good friend of mine named uh, Chris Jackson. So he's going to be joining us via uh, speakerphone. So, Chris, say hi. So we're going to get with him here shortly. What else we got for the show, Shannon? Uh, we got News in a Flash. And we've got a review of the Batman vs. Superman was Ultimate Edition. Ultimate Edition, Edition, which I just bought and watched last night. Awesome. Awesome. Um, kind of slacked off a bit this week. So. That's something I did see. <laughs> That's something he did see. Oh. <laughs> I hope this comes out okay. They should. Yeah. Um. Kind of slacked off a bit this week. Didn't do much reading. John's holding one of my long boxes hostage in the back, so uh, I'm kind of <laughs> my comics are cram packed into three boxes. So ah, uh, you should be speaking crammed. All right, so let, we're going to crack right into this egg here. Uh, we're going to talk about the controversy that is. The new Ghostbusters film. Uh, first up, we had Shannon's uh, review last week. I'll do a quick one real quick. And then we're, we're going to jump into after that. And with, uh, quick Chris. reminder, this is a spoilerific review. Very spoilerific. So um, We had the spoiler-free review last week with my review. This is going to be full of spoilers. So if you don't want spoilers, If you want some, don't want spoilers, well, then it's going to be like a uh, proton beam to the nuts for you. Because... Yeah. We're crossing the streams big time. Yeah. yeah. I did that to spoil it. I pee when I'm in the toilet. <laughs> and I'm swirling it around right there. <laughs> trying to make the water spin the other way. So you're pretending like you were in Australia, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Hi, you, Mike. Let me know what were your favorite parts of the film? There were a few favorite parts. Um, I, 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 I'm sorry. The, the character of uh, Hoffman. Hoff I can't remember her name. Except for the glasses. Oh, um, Chris, uh, Kristen Kate, Wick. No, Kate no, McKinnon. Kate McKinnon. Kate McKinnon stole the movie. Yeah. Uh, and I loved the way she looked because she was very reminiscent of the uh, animated series Egon. Mm -hmm. In, in appearance-wise. Yeah. Um, loved that. Uh, Melissa McCarthy was, like you said last week, was very not. She was less McCarthy. She was tolerable in this. Yeah. Film. Uh, I thought I thought the, the main characters worked really well together, and this was my main issue with the movie, besides the fact that it was even actually made, uh, was the cast. Was not a big fan of the cast. After um, seeing it, my main issue with it, after seeing it, um, was I know Leslie has been receiving a lot of hate on Twitter uh, lately. In fact, she closed her account. She even made me laugh in the movie. Yeah, she did Surprise. make me laugh, but the the massive size difference between her and the rest of the cast you could tell whenever she walked off uh off scene or whatever they zoomed in real close on the other thing yeah and, yeah kind of a big girl there yeah nah <laughs> um i'll tell you the one the, the, you know what everybody's given so much slack to this movie um i'll tell you the one thing that was nails on a chalkboard for me was the new theme music i fucking hate yeah. the new theme music. But, but you only hear it on, briefly in the i don't care it was enough for me to cringe like i was yeah. grabbing my seat and my my girlfriend was asking me because you're all right i'm like no i think my ears are bleeding luckily they did use the original theme it. song yes, at, uh, yes, towards did. the beginning um I, I mean a quick numbered review between one and ten uh, like I said, not the worst movie I've seen this year, not the worst, you know. Well, and I, I gave and it I a seven, seven last Yeah, that's what I'm giving it to. Like I said, I know the cameos, from rumor has it, um, nobody has come out, like, as far as I know, have proven that it's, it's true. But a lot of the cameos were probably forced, but was very welcomed. I enjoyed the cameos that were in there. They did a great did job. Did you catch Harold Ramesses? I caught Harold Ramesses. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah. Um, what did you think about the fact that this Ghostbusters actually had people die in it as opposed to the other two? Yeah, where... and you know what? I want to throw something else out there too. Uh, everybody's giving slack to Chris Hemsworth because he was this dopey, very stupid guy. I thought he was kind of lovable, and I love the fact that Chris Hemsworth was a, had a chance to actually be funny. As in, the side of Chris Hemsworth, we didn't get a chance to see ever because of Thor. Speaking of Chris and... Hemsworth, he's supposed to be returning to Star Trek in Star Trek Four. Yes, and I know you didn't have that in the news for the Flash. I was going to mention that, so that's going to be kind of cool. Chris Hemsworth and Son. Captain Kirk are going to be both in the fourth movie right now. So, and um, Chekhov will not be recasted. So are they going to kill him off in uh, Beyond? I don't, I don't know. But uh, no, back to this yeah. Ghostbuster thing. And we'll get more bad. We'll get more into this here in just a second because I got a guy over here on the phone who's been biting at the at, at the at the at the lips here at the mouth. He's been he's been he's dying, foaming, foaming. It. I've uh, you guys are going to hear everything that I've had to hear for the last year and a half, two years. Uh, keep it clean, please. Uh, don't, don't don't stick to Leslie Jones. Don't stick to Jones. Leslie Jones. No hate, no uh, no bashing. Just keep it professional and real is all we ask. Um, I can do it. You can do that. Well, I, I hope so. So here we go. Um, Chris, welcome to Comic Getting, sir. I know you've been wanting to do this for a long time. Yes, sir. So uh, you hear I us thank okay? You for the opportunity. Can you hear us okay? Is that again? Can you hear us? I okay? can hear you okay. Oh, okay. I can hear you okay. Can you hear sorry, me okay? Okay, so, sorry Shannon had the mic up the, uh, put a mic on my cell phone. <laughs> so, all right, Chris, again, welcome to Comic Again. Thank you, thank you so much. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters, let me, uh, let me start. As you said, no hate, but there's no need to hate on this one. We'll just go back. Uh, yeah, I think the best, two times, this this flick and what offended me the most affirmative action. Uh, I, the movie itself, uh, I, I I would probably not have a problem with. I don't have a problem with the movie being bad or even mediocre. But I do have a problem with this when it affects the business and it affects the heart of the business and the fans. And I grew up just on film and uh, with respect for it. And well, I, see, you, know, you, you say this movie lacks heart. I thought that originally too. Yeah. When I actually saw the movie, I, yeah, I, there I, was heart. I think there was actually some heart in this. But like I said, the, the uh, acting in this movie was wasn't you know Oscar award no. winning by any means. Either was the first one really. Maybe Kate McKinnon, but <laughs> I said Oscar <laughs> award. And I'm a Kate McKinnon fan, uh, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, the design of Holtzman. And I think that's the problem with it all. It was it, it all seemed so designed. It all seemed so uh, manufactured. And I think that was a big problem. And one of the biggest problems was, um, I, I think, and, 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 and at the end of the day, I do believe that any product should be based on their, uh, 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 of what it is. Uh, however, I think that Paul Figgy uh, just, he kind of uh, went the wrong way about it. When, you know, you never, you never disrespect the same, the same people you expect to spend money with. So, um, do you and, think if he didn't have maybe a hidden agenda, because he's, he, well, it's not really hidden, he came right out and pretty much said that this movie was 100% for women, pretty much. Yeah. And it would, which, yeah. which, which goes... Which he, was a, he was a mama's boy growing up anyway. The original Ghostbusters was a man movie, though. I mean, but it, it didn't only, really hate on women. No, it didn't hate on women at, women at all, no. Uh, this one, if this anything, one kind of, it gave women more attitude. Shigoni Weaver. Yeah. Oh, Janine. Oh, yeah. Ghostbusters, what do you want? Um, yeah, you you know, sounded like Jerry Lewis there. The hey, lady. Uh, um, you have so many people acting like Figgy is like this revolutionary, visionary dude as far as like female lead, and a lot. And the sad part is, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the younger people, so they they jump on that bandwagon and they just say things that people tell them to say. And I'm glad you mentioned Sigourney Weaver, and I'm glad you mentioned the original Janine. Well, let me ask you um, this Janine, though. If Paul, let me finish my question though. If Paul Fig or Figgy, as we're calling him, um, however the hell you pronounce his name, 
We'll go with Figgy. I like hey, hey, it's Figgy from here on out. <laughs> We're just going to call him Figgy. But it, it, he can't it, do it, anything it, about it. He's a mama's boy. If, if, <laughs> if Figgy um, didn't make this, um, and I'm not, I won't say personal, because every movie you make should be personal. I think if it's not personal, yeah. then, I mean, you're not doing your job. But if he had made this a, um, what most guys consider a man-hating movie, which I don't see that in a movie, personally, um, do you think it would have been more of a welcomed reboot? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I say design, um, for better or for worse, Piggy uh, put these ideas in everybody's head. Even um, the guys who like are really chauvinist about it, you have to understand that Figgy, at the end of the day, put that in their head before they hit it, and which just generated this buzz about the film and it caused so much to divisiveness that, you know, you have people that are, like, jumping in and just and, for that. So so it's not about, about film itself. It's about the way Figgy played it. I shouldn't say that you know. I didn't see any mandating <clears throat> evidence in the movie, obviously. Okay, yeah, there was uh, the, the proton, the proton pack shot to the nuts hey. obviously yeah <laughs> but hey, see i'm hey, see to me hey. i found it actually funny because and you know you've known me for years i'm a huge fan of slapstick i love uh stooges and Abbott costello uh, but to me a nut shot is about as funny as a pie to the face so that really didn't bother yeah yeah true that but you know they, uh, they made the shot. dean of the college a complete idiot he didn't come on, he didn't know that they were still around the, the he, he seemed shot, like a retired uh, surfer dude. Was it that was well the dean the the dean wasn't he the guy with the beard the guy from Game of Thrones? He was he was he was the bad guy in the Last Action Hero, right? So he was Can in the fire. One thing about the classic nut shot. No, no, no. Oh, oh. Uh, Melissa McCarthy and uh, Kate oh, that McKinnon. Guy, that yeah. guy, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that that guy was an idiot. Uh, can, can I use? Can I can I point one thing out about the classic you know, shot to stick? Yes. Um, usually when it's used, it's a very instantaneous thing. Uh, lasts about maybe a few seconds, and it's kind of deserved. Uh, this is the first time a nut shot has been used with rifles, energy, and used to save the world. Now, if that's not emasculating, baby, I don't know what it is. I don't know. It made me cringe a little bit. The first time I heard about it, I kind of crossed my leg and I had to kind of like, you know, assure my, assure little homie everything is all right. He, he's scared of Ghostbusters. He's scared of proton packs now. If Atlantis more said, you ought to know all over again. It's um... Okay, I can see, I can see your point a little bit there. Yeah, um, you know, and I'm not, I'm not, you can't say that you're fighting sexism when you're using sexism and saying, insisting, this is he did, girls. I, I will say, he women. did kind of say, he did kind of say one yeah. thing and do another. He did do that. He said he was trying to fight sexism, but at the same time, uh, that's exactly it, what he was using. I, 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 I think, I honestly think they should have had Paul Feige as a producer rather than the director. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, definitely. They they should have maybe cast uh, got. Um, and I won't change the cast. No. Before the, before I saw the movie, I would be like, yes, change the cast. I like the cast. Oh yeah. I would have maybe diversified it a little bit more. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, I would have used diverse. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I have no problem with an all female cast, but I would have liked to have seen. I've said this countless times. More of an extreme Ghostbusters approach right. to this movie. And nothing against yeah. Leslie Jones or anything, no. but. Um, her and Melissa McCarthy, I would have completely removed from the cast. Um, you know, I, just simply because Kate McKinnon and Kristen Wiig stole the show. They, yeah, they were really the best, the best characters in the show. And then I would replace Leslie Jones and Melissa McCarthy with two guys. I wouldn't even necessarily say uh, just two guys. Uh, even if they just had one guy, I, again, I would have liked to have seen. Like the extreme ghost yeah. are out. Let let's get a guy in a wheelchair. We had right. uh, the, uh, I forget his name in the in the cartoon series, but they had the guy in the wheelchair. Yeah. Um, that would have been fine. Which extreme Ghostbusters is on Hulu? Or am I might tell you the, Can I tell you what is probably the most insulting thing about the, the character of Patty, and which it was frustrating, and which was the most unoriginal move you could possibly do. Uh, they made it very, very clear that she was there to just replace the another one. 
Well, see, yeah. the movie, in the movie, they, they did make it pretty clear that she was the token black woman. You know. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and to, to say that you're movie, pushing diversity and, and then you do that, that, that that's Winston, not diversity. Baby. Winston never came off as the token <laughs> black guy in the original, though. Right. He was part I of know. the team. Maybe in the second one, he was kind of... <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, in the second one, maybe... But the thing is, Winston was never the token black guy. Like, um, so Figgy puts it out there through the relationship with Leslie Jones' character that now he is. You know, uh, growing up, um, when I was growing up on Ghostbusters, and, you know, they always use that term, anybody can be a Ghostbuster. And that's what they wanted to prove. Not really, because the original Ghostbusters showed me as a black kid, yeah, anybody could be a Ghostbuster, you know, because they treated Winston with respect, and Winston respected himself. And Winston was a very smart dude. Um, well, this, the parody was actually pretty smart in this movie, too. Yeah, she was pretty smart in the movie. She actually had the knowledge of all the buildings, the uh, She the She was more street smart and slightly book smart in a different way from the others, yeah. where the others were scientifically book smart. She was more historically. Sure. Historically inside, yeah. And, and and again, like, if they were really going to mix it up, and if there was a true push for diversity, they would have switched it up. They would have had one of that, one of the white women, you know, be the streetwise one. And, you know, they would have had, they could have had, you know, a black woman that's more the same. They just didn't do it. Okay, but wh- really which is more believable there? Which is more believable, though? A white woman being street smart in New York or a black woman being street smart in New York? Well, guess what? I've met both. And uh, both of them, that under the right circumstances, will be street smart in New York. That's what I'm saying about the whole diversity thing. You can't say that you're going off of diversity when you're actually going off of a stereotype. You see what I'm saying? Right, but... <clears throat> now... Have you, have you ever met a Boston chick? A, a, a white chick from Boston? Yeah. I watched the Burgers. They're, they're wild. They're, they're wild, man. They're wild, man. I mean, yeah, uh-huh. they're street smart. They're more street smart than I am. I'm from Chicago. Now, I know there's more about this movie that you hate than you like. Is there anything about this yes. movie that you like? Uh, the one thing that I will say that I like. Um, like, love, whatever. Okay. And, and, and it is and it is the oddest thing about it because it's the flip side of what I don't like. I did like the fact that uh, there there were female characters, and I do like the fact that they were like making an attempt. Uh, and and so, I mean, at the beginning, I did before Siggy started putting a whole bunch of stuff out there. I did kind of root for it because I was looking at the tech. I was like, okay, cool. And I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Egon, I mean, uh, Hope's been looking like Egon sold me for a hot second. Um, so there were a couple of things that I really wanted to make, I uh, really wanted it to work. Uh, and I wanted that little nostalgia rush. But at the same time, uh, I didn't want them to use the nostalgia and just use it, you know, like actually embrace it, you know, like the next Karate Kid, you know, probably not the not the best movie at all in the world. You know, I, you know, I, I put this how, I put this above that new Karate Kid remake. I do. Oh, 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 no, no, no! I will never watch the new Karate Kid remake. <laughs> My child's not allowed to watch that. No, because that's um, not done. That's not how we do things. They should have just named it Kung Fu Kid. Kung Fu Kid. Uh, another question for you. Oh. Now that. Now that the yes, train wreck known as Ghostbusters is over, they've already said they're going to go forth with a sequel. Uh, those who yes. stay to the uh, post after credits know that the next sequel is going to involve Zool. Shannon didn't stay to yes. the credits. I told him about it. So uh, there's also been rumors that they may switch up uh, the Ghostbusters a bit by maybe introducing a new team, going with the original Dan Aykroyd idea of it being a different team, uh, and because now the, they're um, now the Ghostbusters are being funded by the government in this movie, so yes. uh, the original idea, those who don't know for Ghostbusters, was there were supposed to be many factions of Ghostbusters franchises, franchises, franchises like alone. There you go. Um, so the I, I think in the idea may be to introduce, if not uh, a different team, but maybe from what I've heard, a new team plus the ones we got. From what I've heard, the plan was. The first film was going to be, you know, the the four girls. The second film was going to be um, another team, a guy team. 
The third film will have both teams coming together to fight Gozer, the Gozerian. Okay. So. Uh, it's funny that you guys mention that because I just read an article. Um, Ivan Reitman uh, confirmed a few things. And going back to the question of what did I like about mm-hmm. Ghostbusters 2016, I like the fact that we got over the hump, boys. We're back. It's all class. Got over the what? The hump. Uh-huh. Thirty years. Ago. Thirty. That, that, that is a big plus. We got. Yeah. We finally got yeah. another yeah. Ghostbuster movie. Whether you liked it because or hated it. For worse, we're back in the game, boy. Because we're not back. only did we get a new Ghostbuster movie, we got all this awesome classic Ghostbuster merchandise. So I, was exactly. I would have liked to see a more familiar proton pack and uh, proton wand. So I have no problem with well, that. I didn't really well, care. It doesn't really make sense that. to hold it up top and. Uh, yeah, that'd be uncomfortable as all hell. Well, uh, if you notice the, right throughout the whole movie, they were being upgraded. So maybe in the next one, they're going to be even further upgraded. And, because they already said that the original design, which was similar to the original packs, which mm-hmm. was in the movie, that it looked too heavy and bulky. So that's why they shrunk them down. Now today it's got to work on the guns, the proton ones. And I did like the extra addition of the weapons, though. I mean, mm, we had the little yeah. sidearms, we had the little gloves. I loved Kate McKinnon when she took the two pistols out. And, oh, I forgot about my babies. Yeah. And I mean, a lot of it, and I know this was an ass. issue that you had originally when you saw the trailer, Chris, but um, yeah. these new weapons, especially for what they were getting ready to battle, actually, they weren't just there to like, oh, look, possible new toys. No, th- these actually were very practical. Yeah. Uh, they worked really well into the story. I would have liked to see the original Ghostbusters come up with some, like, the Ghost Well, bombs that, well now, the now in the bombs. cartoon series, they did. Yeah. In the cartoon series, they did. So that's why the extra addition to all these little weapons and that did really bother me. But, you know, I loved how right after uh, Kate McKinnon, you know, licks her gun, she just starts whooping ghost ass with those pistols. Yeah. I understand. Oh, and, and, and something else is they're not really pistols. We They're actually kind of... Uh, how is the best way to explain this? They kind of look like um, Whiplash's whips from the third Iron Man or second Iron Man movie. Well, they, they were kind of used. They kind of since they since they had the cords that attached to the proton. Well, hold on, what, Chris? I thought I wasn't supposed to talk about Iron Man two anymore. <laughs> since they had the cords that attached to the proton pack, I thought I thought they reminded me uh-huh. more of the uh, Duck Hunt gun. <laughs> <laughs> Reitman actually just confirmed um, in an article recently, really good news, um, he said they will figure out, and in quotation marks, the correlation between the original Ghostbusters and this universe. So they're so, already hinting at the, at the boys coming back. So does, it, does this make you feel a little bit more at ease about this new movie, knowing that they are going to try going yeah. the Evil Dead route and try to merge the two? That's why I said, one thing I will say about this movie, this movie got us over the hump and we're so back it's gonna in the So it's going to be kind of convergence Ghostbusters. for Ghostbusters. Kind of, it sounds like, yeah. So I'm okay with that. Uh, we, we wanted the original yeah. guys back anyway, with or without Murray. Right. I like Mur- I like and, the you know, Murray fan, but if Murray, you want to do another Murray Ghostbusters, did get fun. Murray did get his wish, though. The only way, he said the only way he would do yes. another Ghostbusters movie is if he got killed off. and If he got killed. He got killed. I love the way his character died too. It was he, he was Bill the Walter Peck no. of the movie. And he he was yeah he. Um, Bill Murray gets what Bill Murray wants, man. At the end of the day. But, but yeah, I mean, and I've said that I'm a big Bill Murray fan. Love Bill Murray, but if he doesn't want to do another Ghostbusters, fuck you, fuck him. Just do it with the do it with, with, do it with Lincoln, do it with Ray. I'm fine with no Murray. Let, yeah, because I mean, you guys come in, in Ghostbusters 2, it started out with just Ray and Winston anyway as the... Uh, no, it's, yeah, it started out with Ray and Winston. Because um, both Egon and uh, Peter were off doing their own things. Yeah. Ray and Winston were yeah. just party performers. So if Ray and Winston want to bring in, like, two other guys and maybe two others so they can retire somewhere in the movie, I'd be okay with that. You know, just, again, okay. this, this movie be. here should have been the extreme <laughs> yeah. version. And if you want to, if you want to go with the female lead, let me put this name out there: Winnie Zedmore. If you want a female Ghostbuster, get Winnie Zedmore in there. He's saying Winnie Winston's daughter, or right. something like that. Yeah. 
if Winston had a kid, if Winston had a kid that had a daughter, that would be the person who needs her new kid. Yeah. Don't you think? Yeah. See, I've always thought perfect person uh, would be uh, Eliza, 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 Dis- Eliza Dishker. Because Dan Aykroyd oh, yeah. is her godfather. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. Really? Yeah, I did not know. Yeah. She actually we appeared at a Comic Con with a proton pack. Nice. Good oh, why is this not happening? Hey, so, that's what I'm saying. Going back to the cast. Why yeah. wasn't she in the cast? Why didn't we get kick ass Ghostbusters? But Paul Feige had casting. Yeah. Um, if it would have been Ivan Reitman who was in control of it, he would have. He would have signed on Eliza Dusk. Dusk. I think so. I think so. But I since so. I think I think that's honestly that's what we need for the next one. I think Figgy needs to be allowed to leave, and Reitman needs to come yeah. back. Yeah. I know Reitman, Reitman said he will do another Ghostbusters right. because Ramus isn't there, but I think because the franchise is at risk. Yeah. I think he need, does need to step in, like much like Brian Singer did with X Men. He left X Men. The X-Men franchise was a huge, huge, hugely at risk at falling, and Singer came in, and he, he, we go, whether you like a lot of the last uh, few X-Men movies or not, they saved the franchise. Right. But I think that was, uh, that's what Reitman needs to do, and uh, Figgy needs to go eat some pudding and <laughs> try something else. Yeah. Speaking of pudding, did you hear Bill Cosby is uh, completely blind now? Yeah, I feel bad uh... for Cosby. No, I feel bad for Cosby. I do. Um... I just no. I feel bad for Cosby. I'm sorry. Well, you know he's he's he's, he's getting old. I mean he's been old. Like, let's let's face it, he's been old since we were born. I mean it's it's I don't know. It, it's sad to hear, but at the same time, let's hope everybody kind of leaves him alone. You know. But, yeah, leave this. Leave, let's leave let's go old man. Yeah. I whether he whether he's innocent or not. I mean, don't you don't you don't attack yeah. uh, a man down. Yeah. You don't. No, I mean, he's exactly. still close he's okay enough to a grave now. Anyway. I mean, oh, yeah. it's, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. sad to they say that, but, you know. I mean, you, you saw that Fat yeah, Albert movie he was in, it. he didn't look very good yeah. in that movie. And his stand-up, I, you know, he one eye was completely fogged over, glazed over, whatever you want I to call it. So he was only able to see I, it with one eye during his last stand-up. I tell course. you what, I tell you what, I'll even go so far as to say, you know what, If he did, even if he did do it, hey, ladies, he's blind. Let's call it even. Right. My gosh, my gosh. <laughs> well, even even Stephen you know? isn't money in their pocket. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so. I mean, or yeah. justice. Speaking of sad things, can we because. talk about Anton Yelchin? Can we talk about Chekhov, the kid? Um, Here's some. Sure. Um, yeah. What, why did um, Gene Roddenberry? Name him Chekhov. It sounds so much like Jackal. <laughs> I don't think he was thinking I know, that. I know. Was he trying to be like, I don't know, if, was he trying to be an act? Or was he trying to be like a, a jerk about it? Or was he trying to be very no, an I didn't um, think. I think he was trying to find the most Russian sounding uh, unusual name. And, sir, I think you're going to say about the same thing I'm thinking as far as not recasting Yelchin as Chekhov. And that is the character Trump's actor. That is why. You know what? Huh? Uh, you, this is the one time, and I know you're gonna be shocked about this. This is the one time I think I can now. Uh, I think I can go with this. Really? Uh, and and this is why I say this. You surprised me. The only me. reason I say this, uh, is because it will lend the Kelvin timeline the credibility that it was the past before. It shows that you that the Kelvin timeline is open to major changes and surprise changes. Well, here's the thing. They not have. I would like to see them do a new next generation movie. Or inter- yeah, or inter- yeah. maybe in the new universe somehow. Well, with with uh, Kirk's daddy coming back for the fourth movie, I think that's kind of a hint that they're going to try doing the time travel thing again. Or I, mean, I guess it could maybe be flashback, but maybe time travel or some type of alternate universe. Well, they are doing the new Star maybe. Trek TV series in January, so which Netflix has been said to be picked up. Really. I guess it's not made to say picked up, but it's going to air on Netflix, which is weird because nothing CBS will not let Netflix air anything. In no. Most part. I mean, so I was really surprised. Well, they, they, they got NCIS. CBS won't let anybody <laughs> who really cares about anything. Oh, God. NCIS is pretty good. Stuff. I mean, come on. I can't coming back home is a, is a good thing. Um, 
However, they said they're going back to their original universe. And I'm glad they announced the fourth movie because I really think this Kelvin timeline, and I'm glad you said the next generation, it's a huge chance to get, like, Trek really out there in a major way without... Really Chris and I are a long, long, long time Trek fans. I would like to see a new next generation style uniform based on the same way they redesigned the uh, yeah. original series uniform. Not, none of that velvety exactly. style uh, uniform that looks odd as hell. But, um, but no, um, getting back to this whole the Ghostbuster thing now. Yeah, we um, got kind of sidetracked. Yeah, really. Several times. Because <laughs> that's not unusual for this show at all. <laughs> we, we, we can't hate on bad films the whole time. But we gotta, you know, <laughs> well, see, it, it wasn't a bad film, film though. No, I, I mean, I, I enjoyed well, it. Right. It's it's not film. A bad film. Yeah, I'm glad you know, like I paid I said, money Mickey. for it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think Figgy was a bad factor. What was that, Chris? I think Figgy just left a bad taste in people's mouths for yeah. the most part. Uh, and I'll be the first to say, like, he didn't leave yeah, one in my mouth. People. I just want to go on record and say he didn't leave no. one in my mouth. He didn't come anywhere near me. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, do you have something you want to tell? Yeah, sure. Chris, is there something you want to you want to share with the class? The class? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't. But all right. No. <laughs> No, your butt's not alright. I don't want to know how Figgy tastes. Hey, if you went camping and woke up with a condom in your ass, would you tell anybody? Uh, I would probably make a report and have, I would probably make a report and go to him in this route and just like get money off the publicity and like keep you. Okay. <laughs> uh, but now, but yeah, knowing, know, knowing that there's going to be a se- sequel, knowing that there's a chance that at least Ackroyd and, and um, um, Hudson can come back. Um, and okay. it, the end of the movie kind of opened up for the original Ecto-1 to come back. They can do the Ecto-1 because we have the original Firehouse back again. Uh, Zool is coming in, so there is some possible interdimensional play there in the next movie, maybe. These are just assumptions. These aren't facts. This is something I read, but, you know. Um, so okay. are, would, you, would you be open to giving this, knowing what you know now, what you just told us, are you willing to give this movie a, um, a second chance? Yeah, I'll be, I'm willing to give the movie a chance and to the point where, you know, just out of pure geekdom, I will probably dissect it for every Easter egg. Well, you, you've been dissecting this for about a year and a half, two years now, so I'm fully aware of that. I, and, 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 and I, as you see, I have more work to do. Uh, this is Ghostbusters we're talking about and possibly just a new franchise. I got a kid, man. I got to make sure it's done right. You know, I took, my kid, I took all three of my kids to see it. They loved it. This is, yeah, this is definitely um, a kids' movie too. Yeah, right? a younger it, kids' movie. Yeah, it is kid friendly, more kid friendlier than the original, because yes. because uh, the original yeah. did have the uh, Ackroyd scene. There's the Ackroyd uh, ghost blowjob scene. Yeah. There's a lot of adult <laughs> innuendos in that movie. Yeah. There was a part where I mean, when, where they take the uh, wands and the end of the wand extends. When they're getting ready to put that wouldn't that wasn't in any window at all. <laughs> so, but no, th- th- okay. yeah, th- I will say the, th- that about this movie is it is, it is very it is a lot kid friendly um, than the original. It, it is kind of cute to actually see of- Mr. and Miss, Mrs. Slimer together. Yeah. I hated seeing it in the trailer, but in the movie it actually worked. It was kind of funny the way they did it, uh, and it's just not one of those. Oh, she appears and then they start oogling and goggling. It, it's like they were already a couple. Yeah. So that was kind of neat. Which, in in the comics, it was explained that Slimer was an ancient king. Really? Yeah, back in the, like, Middle Ages or whatever. He, yeah. he, he died from eating himself to death. What? So, that, um, so he's kind of in his own purgatory. Pretty much, yeah. Wow. They went deep with him. That explains a, that explains a lot. Yeah. And he just like happened to look lot. like John Belushi. Yes. Okay. Pretty much. Because if you know, well, those who don't I'm know, Slimer right. was very much based on John Belushi, who was supposed to play Peter Bankman in the movie. Yeah. So. Exactly. And in the cartoons, so Slimer, his worst fear ever wasn't being put in the containment unit. Yeah. His worst fear ever was broccoli. Broccoli, yeah. In fact, the <laughs> second episode of the second uh, second episode of Extreme Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> So, Which I just watched the other day. Um, so, well, we usually do our little final thoughts on things. Chris, you're our guest. You have yes, the sir. first final thoughts on Ghostbusters. Uh, the final thought of 
Okay, the final thought on Ghostbusters is, uh, for the most part, we can look forward to the franchise being reinvigorated and the potential to do a lot of stuff. Uh, from what I've heard, uh, it, it, it's a decent little summer flick. If the kids can enjoy it, if people can just laugh, cool. Uh, the marketing and the politics around it, mostly negative. Um, but at the end of the day, you got to judge the film for what it is. I keep it like that. I, it's potential. I, I'll give it the potential stamp. Okay. Um, did you have fun today? I did. I did. I had a lot of fun today. I was glad it was just hanging out. Uh, you know, as usual, you know, whenever, whenever we get together, it's always a good time. Uh, glad to kick it with Shannon. Glad to get the little hate out of my heart. You know, as you know, it's been stirring for a while. Yeah. But uh, we look forward to the future. And hope to have you back Thank on the show sometime. Maybe live in person. Maybe live and in person. Oh, yeah. oh, you know, the, hey, don't tempt me. You know, I can blow in. I can blow into town anytime. You know, I've done it before. I can do it again. Still in Minneapolis. Ah. So, so. <laughs> well, Chris, I thank you very much, sir, for coming on. Nice talking with you, Chris. Right. Chris, just so I everybody knows, you, just so everybody knows, what's my name? Elwood. I'm Elwood. <laughs> Oh, the tall, yeah, yeah, yeah. the tall, skinny one. I'm the short, fat one. Who should be Jake, but he calls me Elwood, so I'm okay, I'm okay with that. Hey, that's Elwood, man. I mean, he's been Elwood since we were little, man. I'm not sorry. It's kind of looks more like Danny DeVito to me. What? He has his reasons. I trust, trust me, there's a reason for the name, man. It goes a long way back. He's always, he's always going to be from the same side of Chicago. I didn't used to be this fat. He used to be, but he is now. Yeah, I am. Now. <laughs> I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I know. We're not talking about your hair. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. <laughs> All right, brothers. I have pretty, my pretty lady just walked in. I got to give her some time. You guys take it easy. Take care, Chris. Thanks. Have a good one. All right. Love you, brother. Love, love you. So, um... Yeah, we'll be back with more coming in.